A very big hello to all my dear students. So welcome to the T2O series of your favorite channel, you and I. So today I'm going to discuss a few topics, one or two topics that are mandatory to be revised properly before your NEET PG exam. Okay. And this is in addition to the topics that I've discussed for your INICT. So I, I believe you should be uh, revising all these topics again. Okay. So of course, there are so many of them which needs a quick revision. Not possible to discuss everything here at this moment. But yes, I'm trying to pick up the topics which you all find a little more tricky or difficult and so on. So what basic in retina, we all know that diabetic retinopathy is a very, very important topic and we all should revise it properly, okay? So one is this, a very quick revision here if you all want, that diabetic retinopathy, what are the points? I'll speak more if you want to note it down. That it is the duration of the diabetes is the most important factor for occurrence of retinopathy in a diabetic. Second most important factor we all know is glycemic control. Which diabetes is retinopathy more common? It is type 1 diabetes where retinopathy will be more common. Okay? So once we know all these important things, the important thing is what are the features and pathogens. If you have attended my previous sessions, you will find it in the YouTube also or in my class. How I have explained you about retinitis proliferans that how when there is a hypoxia, a quick revision here, hypoxia is going to increase capillary permeability and any increased capillary permeability will lead to leakage, right? And when there is a leakage in the retina, you see all types of edema, hemorrhage, exudates, correct? And more hypoxia, there is release of chemotactic factors, there is neovascularization. Neovascularization is described as at the disc or elsewhere, right? And finally, after that, what can be the complications? When there is a neovascularization, it can lead to, a lot of bleeding can lead to vitreous hemorrhage, it can cause traction on the retina leading to tractional retina detachment because there is a fibrotic tissue also growing along with the new vessels or it can lead to hypoxia of the anterior segment, neovascularization of the iris leading to neovascular glaucoma. So, as a quick recap here, so accordingly in, the, in your diabetic retinopathy, we have to please, you do revise your ETDRS classification. Okay? So, ETDRS has classified it as non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Now, this non-proliferative can be, a recent one says, very mild. Then comes your mild, moderate, severe and very severe. This is where they ask you an exam question. So, very mild is only microaneurysm. If they ask you which layer the microaneurysms, please answer it is nerve fiber layer. Okay, not inner nuclei, you will answer nerve fiber layer. Mild means this is mild. With microaneurysms, there are hard exudates. Can you see the hard exudates? They have asked you how to recognize hard, hard exudates on the slides. So you should know these are hard exudates. This is dot and blot hemorrhage. This is your flame shaped hemorrhage. Okay, then. More hypoxia, so this is mild. Mild means all these features apart from microaneurysms, not writing, you can note down, that is hemorrhage and exudate. Coming to the next, more hypoxia, it is going to lead to pre-proliferative state, which is also called moderate NPDR. What is moderate? We get looping and beading of capillaries like this, as you see here. More number of cotton wool spots, see, this is also moderate, so much of cotton wool spots. Then these are cotton spots. What are cotton wool spots? You all know they are axonal in far, that is red axons. So these are the cotton wool spots, flame shaped hemorrhage, big large blot hemorrhage which are venous in parts. So get IRMA, which is intra retinal microvascular abnormalities. These are capillary shunt vessels. So when the number of cotton wool, more hypoxia means more damage, so more cotton wool spots, okay, and hemorrhages, exudates. Both soft, cotton wool soft uh, spots are also called, sorry, soft exudates. Hai na? So, both hard and soft exudates, okay. Then I said looping and beading of the veins. Beading is something you have to understand when it is, the look is like this, this is beading. So, here we can appreciate looping a little bit of 
not reading, but mainly looping is shown in this slide. So, looping and beading of veins or capillaries on the venous side, then what else? IRM, which are capillary shunts. This is your moderate. What is severe NPDR? That is, you have to remember, we learn by 4 is to 2 is to 1 rule. You all remember 4 is to 2 is to 1 rule? If you divide this whole into 4 quadrants, right? If you are dividing this retina into 4 quadrants, then hemorrhages and microaneurysms, two things. Write down and hemorrhage and microaneurysm in all four quadrants or IRMA in one quadrant, like two. What is four is to two? Looping. This is looping and beading in two quadrants or IRMA in one quadrant. This is four is to one is to two. two four is to two is to one rule. Okay. So IRMA in any one quadrant, looping in any two quadrant or hemorrhages and microaneurysms in all four quadrants. This is described as severe NPDR. And what is very severe? When more than one criteria of severe is present, we call it very severe NPDR. Okay. So, this should be clear. And yes, how do you manage? So, we, of course, glycemic control is always important. Yeah? Along with that, we are going to see whether there is macular edema. If there is macular edema, if there is no macular edema, it just needs a follow-up. And glycemic control. If there is a macular edema, our first line of treatment would be intravitreal antivagic injections. And later on, maybe we need some photocoagulative therapies, right? Like grid and focal photocoagulation at the macular area. Remember? So this was just quick revision, so just revise this. And if there is already a proliferative DR, then our first line of treatment becomes what? Pan retinal photocoagulation. So when you say proliferative DRs with NVD, can you see here? This is NVD, neovascularization at the disc, along with all the features. That is, this is your cotton wool spots, right? These are some hard exudates. This is your flame-shaped hemorrhages, dot and blot, large blot hemorrhage. All these findings are typical of PDR when there's a neovascularization. And when there's a neovascularization, so PDR means there's too much of hypoxia. So now you have to laser the majority part of your retina. So we go for pan-retinal photocoagulation. So that was a quick recap. I want you all to please nicely revise this. Another thing that we need a revision, let's look at this question and try to solve. So the incongruous homonymous hemianopia with burning hemianopic pupil. You all should be very thorough with legends of visual pathway. So we all know when we talk about homonymous hemianopia, which is incongruous, we are typically talking about optic tract lesion as burning hemianopic. Right? So when you talk about your lesions of the visual pathway when you're revising, so I think it's very, very easy. If one if you want, you can just note down with my way of like this is your left retina, this is your right retina, divided as Nasal, temporal, nasal, temporal, right? Nasal fibers decussate, temporal will not. So, this is your lateral geniculate body. Optic regions, some pass from oral, some from parietal. Temporal and parietal. And then finally, they are ending up into visual cord. If we are very clear about this diagram, rough, simple diagram. So, this way, it becomes very easy to learn the Lesions of visual. If there is, suppose, whole nerve is gone, we all know that blindness on the side. If it is at the chiasma, we have discussed chiasma lesion in our previous sessions. We know central chiasma lesion will lead to bitemporal hemianopia. Now, if there is this lesion of tract where there is one eye temporal, one eye nasal, we all know it will be field effect will become homonymous hemianopia. If the temporal fibers are gone, we get a nasal field effect. If the nasal is gone, we get a temporal. This is what is on the same side called homonymous hemianopia. What is incongruous? It is not symmetrical. It is not in continuity. So we call it incongruous. Right? Now, then of course, we know when you talk about optic radiation lesions, it will depend. If it is a temporal fibers which are passing through temporal lobe, if this is gone, what do you get? These are inferior fibers and therefore what we get is Superior quadrant topia. What do you call that? Pi in sky. If there is parietal lobe lesion, now it is 
having superior fibers. So now this time what you get is pi in flow rate. Right? You remember this? Pi in sky and pi in flow. It's just a quick revision. You should know all this. Correct? And then when you talk about more posteriorly into the parietal lobe, it will be homonymous hemianopia, but this time it is a congruous thing. And what about visual cortex? Let's talk about that also. So what do you see here? I can see here one is, this is not there, this is not there. So it's a right homonymous, sorry, right or left? Left. Right, we can see now, right side we can, he can see. So left-sided homonymous hemianopia. Okay. This left-sided homonymous hemianopia. Okay. Of course, this is bitemporal hemianopia. We have discussed about seesaw nystagmus as well in the previous session. This is totally discussed in detail, so I think I can skip this. Of course, this is your pi in sky, that is temporal lobe lesion, and this is pi in floor, parietal lobe lesion. Okay? Okay. Coming to visual cortex, you have to remember it is. Supplied by two arteries, one is posterior cerebral artery and one is middle cerebral artery. So, what is this field effect? When posterior cerebral artery is gone, the posterior cerebral middle cerebral supplies the macular area. So, when posterior will be gone, this macula is spared. So, this is what you are looking at is macula sparing homonymous. You know, what do you call this? Keyhole vision, not visual field effect. Visual field effect, what did we discuss? It is a LGB lesion, which is seen in lateral geniculate body. We are talking not about keyhole visual field defect. We are talking about keyhole vision. So that is the feature. That is macula sparing homonymous. Okay. And if the middle cerebral is gone, it will not cause total macula because macula has dual blood supply from both posterior cerebral and middle. So another one small additional thing. When are you going to get a total macular homonymous amyanopia? You are going to say in trauma to the tip of visual cortex. So when there is a trauma to the tip of visual cortex. That was a quick revision towards your need PG. Also see the sessions which are, and questions that I had discussed before INICT. Everything is going to help. Okay. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Yes, it was a quick revision. So if you think you missed something or you have not understood, you can just go and read it in detail or you can DM. Thank you. Stay blessed. Keep smart.